Sonic Colors is often considered a turning point for the Sonic franchise, the first 3D Sonic game to finally get it right, often referred to as one of the best installments that the series has to offer. As well as that, it was the first mainline Sonic game of the 2010s. Meanwhile, there is Sonic Forces, the final mainline Sonic game of the 2010s, considered a huge letdown and easily one of the weaker installments from the Sonic franchise. Franchise. So you might be thinking, Channel Pup, why the fudge are you comparing these two? Surely there is no comparison. Surely this is the most easy autopilot video ever made. Well, those who know me know that I have quote unquote bad takes, or in other words, a differing opinion. Some folks that watched my Sonic Retrospective series might have noticed that I'm a tad blasé on Sonic Colors, while I'm also not a huge fan of Sonic Forces either. So my thesis for this video is that a lot of what Sonic Forces got wrong was learned from Sonic Colors. I think that the differences between these two games are far smaller than most people are necessarily willing to admit. Now, the purpose of this video is not to say you were wrong or to, to point fingers and say change your mind on this subject. No, 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 no. I'm only here to offer a new perspective, but all of this is still ultimately subjective. I think People when making videos like this tend to try and cling on to the idea that their points are a bit more objective and that we're talking about objective qualities. And while there will be some objective points in this video, your opinion of said objective points is still going to be completely subjective. What I call bare bones might be streamlined in your eyes, or what I call overcomplicated might be comprehensive in your eyes. I shouldn't have to explain this, but my words are not a 50 ton weight for you to carry. It's, uh, it's not that deep. So with that out of the way, let's pit these two games against each other. Sonic at the start of the decade, Sonic at the end of the decade. Sonic Colors versus Sonic Forces. <laughs> Sonic Colors was something that Sonic fans had kind of been asking for over the course of the 2000s. A Sonic game without a gimmick. Sonic fans loved the daytime stages of Sonic Unleashed with its fast-paced gameplay, and wanted something akin to that minus the werehog. And Sega delivered Sonic Colors, a game that would be nothing but the daytime stage gameplay from Sonic Unleashed, as an entire game with no additional gimmick. Instead of a gimmick, there would be optional power-ups throughout the game in the form of Wisps, aliens from outer space that could provide Sonic with different abilities to navigate these stages slightly differently if the player would so please. This would be the game to bring 3D Sonic back to his roots. This would be the 3D Sonic game to simplify things, remove the additional characters, and just provide more of a 3D translation of what a classic Sonic game would feel like. In some ways, Sonic Forces seek to do the opposite, bringing a large-scale Sonic wartime story with a small selection of different playstyles, there being Modern Sonic and Classic Sonic, which was a huge smash hit in Sonic Generations, as well as the addition of the Avatar character, where players can make their very own character and play through missions as said character. On paper, sure, Sonic Colors does sound like a far cry from Sonic Forces. However, the new element that Sonic Forces brings to the table being the Avatar character doesn't stray too far from the modern Sonic gameplay style, which is a tried and tested playstyle, avoiding that trope of the gimmicks interrupting the speed and flow of the gameplay, such as the weather. Sonic Colors is comprised of seven unique zones, each zone having seven acts, one of which is a boss battle. All seven acts of all seven zones are compulsory to play through. There are no optional bonuses here, however you can make up the order as you please, as the zones tend to open up three at a time once you get past Tropical Resort. Meaning that you can play the game in your own order, if you get tired of one particular zone you can always just move on over to another zone. 
just as long as you do complete all the acts, which you do have to complete in order. So the acts of the zone you have to complete in order, but the zones you can kind of make your own way. Does that make sense? I mean, you've probably played the game yourself. I mean, otherwise, what are you, stupid? Sonic Forces' structure is a lot more linear, with levels just going level by level. You take it one mission at a time. You'll go back and forth through different zones as perspectives change between the different characters and the mission is also dictated very much by the story. So the story might require you to go back and revisit Green Hill Zone. As say the Avatar, next thing you know you're suddenly in the Death Egg as Classic Sonic. Which does keep things pretty fresh. Every stage does feel purposeful in Sonic Forces, whereas in Sonic Colors, it can get to a point where it feels like a bit of a drag, like you've spent perhaps just a little too much time in this environment. More on that in a bit. Sonic Colors' structure is very tidy and allows for a bit more wiggle room and customization though. I think they're both pretty appropriate. Now here's where things are going to be getting into the nitty gritty details. Sonic Colors' whole appeal is just keeping it to the singular Sonic gameplay style with no gimmicks. Very much modelled after the daytime stage Sonic from Sonic Unleashed, but with a few tweaks. Back in Sonic Unleashed, Sonic had an arsenal of unique skills that could help you progress through the level. And the more you utilised those skills appropriately, the more points you would grind up. These abilities were always at your disposal and it was kind of on you as to when you wanted to use them. With Sonic Colors, that is no longer the case. All of those skills do return, such as the Drift and Quick Step, but can only be used at telegraphed times when the game tells you it's time to use them, and that's all you can really do in those times. Making for a much more restrictive take on this gameplay style. I'm not sure if this was to better complement the Wii control scheme. However, this limitation does take away from the joys of using your skills to get through a level faster and with more points. I much preferred seeing a curve for myself and saying, hey, I'll drift now, to being told when to drift and having no choice but to drift. It just feels that little bit less immersive because of it. As well as that though, Sonic also comes with a double jump, which is pretty handy. Especially in water levels, I mean, is he, is he supposed to be able to do that? I have to say, Sonic Colors' gameplay style is definitely a downgrade from the daytime stage gameplay style from Sonic Unleashed. Taking away the player's choice to utilize certain skills in certain environments definitely takes away from some of the immersion factor. Between Sonic Colors and Sonic Forces was Sonic Generations, which went back to the Unleashed gameplay style, but with improvements on movement such as momentum, in order to make the modern Sonic just that bit more versatile. Perfecting the boost gameplay before Sonic Forces kind of just went back to the Colors style. So you can quick step whenever you want now, but uh, the drift is completely omitted. It does make a return in the Avatar's gameplay, however, it is relegated to just being a scripted event that happens automatically. And that's actually way worse than what Colors did. But make no mistake, Modern Sonic's gameplay style in this is certainly different from Colors in some ways. Yes, the double jump returns, but it's worse. And everything from Sonic Colors makes a comeback, but it's all a lot worse now. Sonic feels a whole lot heavier in Sonic Forces, and his momentum feels about as natural as Nicki Minaj's ass. So what these two Sonic gameplay styles have in common is that they're both for some reason a downgrade from one that came before. The thing is, I can kind of understand why Sonic Colors might have simplified things a little bit more. Being a Wii exclusive made specifically for the Wii's control scheme, I understand why they might want to keep things a bit more simplified. Whereas when it goes over to Forces, I'm uh, I'm drawing up a blank on that one, I don't really know. I also can't for the life of me figure out why the momentum and gravity has been downgraded from colors. It's a, it's a strange case, it's, a, it's an odd one. The Avatar's gameplay does spice things up a little bit. While your Avatar lacks the boost, they can make use of the Wisps returning from Sonic Colors to navigate the levels a little bit differently. As well as that, they've got Wisp Bonds, which are weapons that are all based on the different Wisp power-ups. I'm gonna straight up say this, it's got all of the fun of the modern Sonic stages, but just with that little bit of extra customization 
animation and skill set, which definitely saves a little bit of face. And then there's Classic Sonic, who is a recreation of that classic Sonic gameplay style from the Mega Drive games, and uh, is kind of a spiritual successor to the Sonic Generations Classic Sonic, except, like modern Sonic, his gravity's gone up, as has his momentum, which means he feels like shit. So I think it is safe to say that gameplay-wise, Sonic Colors is definitely for the win here. It definitely has the better engine, while it does lack some of the versatility. This would be a bit tougher were it not for the very unnatural motion of Sonic's gameplay in Sonic Forces. Okay, look, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, okay, this is an easy win for Sonic Colors, right? Sonic Forces is famous for having some of the worst level design in the series. So, okay, let's get Sonic Forces out of the way first. We're going to state the obvious a few times. These levels feel empty, unsatisfying, unsubstantial, and are very short, going on for about a minute on average. There's a strong over-reliance on 2D sections, for when levels get the slightest bit ambitious. And on a whole, the level design is just very unsatisfying. So I know what you're thinking, man, they've really fallen from grace. But I've got to admit, I do disagree with the sentiment that Sonic Colors' level design was that much better than Sonic Forces. The thing with Sonic Forces is with its zones, there's no commitment as to how many acts said zones are going to have. Whereas with Sonic Colors, there are six acts and a boss fight. I guess with Sonic Colors, you feel a bit more fulfilled because you spend more time in each zone because of that seven act structure. But at the same time, a lot of these acts really only last as long as your average Sonic Forces stage. As a matter of fact, often shorter even. Act 1 is usually a pretty decent introduction to the stage. Short, but sweet. You know that you're going to be getting more out of this later on. So it's okay that those first acts do feel kind of like something from Sonic Forces, right? Well, here's the thing. Throughout my experience playing Sonic Colors, which was actually just yesterday, I really just got the sense that the level designers at Sonic Team did those first acts and then were just scratching their heads as to how to get seven acts out of these level premises. With Sonic Forces, more often than not, I would end the stage thinking, well, where the fuck is the rest of it? But with Sonic Colors, I end the stage thinking, I didn't like any of that. Act 1 is thrilling, but then you have such riveting gameplay after that, such as standing on a switch and waiting for the platforms to move. Standing on a switch, waiting for the lasers to turn running around in a circle. This shit right here. For starters, remember when I said that there was an over-reliance on 2D in Sonic Forces? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Sonic Colors. This is where this game really falls apart for me. Wow, isn't it great that we've got a game that's nothing but daytime stages from Sonic Unleashed? Well, it sure as hell doesn't feel like that when the level design looks like this. For starters, where do I even begin? Modern Sonic does not fit in with this blocky style of level design. I'm not one of those guys that says Sonic is all about just going fast. No, there needs to be platforming. But not this. What is this? There's a dissonance between this Sonic and these platforming layouts. This Sonic does not perform well in these level layouts. My boy needs to run. When do I get the chance to run? Now, fortunately, much of the 3D sections don't consist of that. But as I say, calling Sonic Colors the best 3D Sonic game is quite a cop-out considering 99% of this game is in 2D and the 2D sections suck ass. I have to tell you, it really fucking pains me when you begin the level with this nice little rotating image of Sonic and it's like, ooh, is it gonna be 3D? Is it gonna be- oh, it's fucking 2D, isn't it? A majority of these levels began with me groaning at just the sight of the side of Sonic's head. Sega, just fucking grow a pair and make a 3D Sonic game already. Sonic Forces at least had a little bit more 3D than this comparatively. Another thing that Sonic Forces is very commonly criticized for is its scripted sequences which within those levels. Well, watch this. Starlight Carnival, ladies and gentlemen.
doesn't this look so fun to play? Well, it would be if I was fucking playing it. Remember how much of Sonic Colors' selling point was that it's a Sonic game without a gimmick? Well, what the fuck is this? They took the gimmick away from Sonic and put it straight into the levels. Hey, you like springs? How about a whole fucking level where a spring just follows you around and you just gotta stay on that spring? Isn't this fucking riveting? It's like someone said, hey, take a look at a classic Sonic game. Right, now take that act and split it into seven. Okay, well we'll have an act devoted to the tree and an act devoted to the spring. It would be like if Scrap Brain Zone was comprised of seven acts and one of the acts was exclusively just rolling around on these stupid wheel things here. Sonic Colors takes things that would work well in a larger level and just exhausts them. And when it's done with that, it starts combining them. Oh boy, I'm sure glad that stupid fucking yellow spring is back. This level is basically fucking empty. They've just put these weird robots in here that throw shit at me. And then there's that disharmony between the level themes and the level layouts. These stages don't really make use of their environment. How do we utilize a tropical resort in level design form? I know, blocks. Oh, we got a planet that's made entirely out of food. Oh, what, what should we do? Oh, blocks and lasers. Yeah, that's perfect. A carnival in space. What should we do with that? Blocks. Alien homeworld. Blocks. It's like if they learned nothing from Sonic 1. And that's basically what the epitome of this game is. There's an additional game mode in here called the Sonic Simulator, which can be used as like a multiplayer experience. And what this basically is, is it takes the modern Sonic Boost gameplay style and sticks it in Sonic 1 level layouts ad verbatim. And that's what this game is. It's like the gameplay of Sonic Unleashed with the level design philosophy of Sonic 1. A level design philosophy that Sonic Team outgrew the second game in because it didn't work with Sonic's speed-oriented gameplay. That's not to say that Sonic Colors doesn't have a small handful of decent level design in there. It is there, but if that's the case, are we truly just gonna write off all of the decent levels that were in Sonic Forces as well? Sure, there's nothing on the scale of, like, Sonic Generations, but, like, Null Space, Mortar Canyon... And with Sonic Colors, th I mean, there is the Wisps, which save this experience. Because it just means that you can skip over massive parts of the level. If this is getting too monotonous, just use a laser wisp to get you across. But I shouldn't feel like I need to take a break from Sonic. The wisps should not be a refuge from Sonic. Sonic should always be fun. Now, Sonic Forces does have quite its fair share of block platforming, but it's relatively relegated to classic Sonic, who I'd say is better equipped to handle it. Actually, no, fuck that, I forgot how disgusting you feel, Classic Sonic, Jesus. There's also all this shit in these bonus additional unlockable stages, but fortunately they're completely optional. In Sonic Colors, this crap would have been the main event. So while Sonic Colors' gameplay style might be great, the level design completely shits the bed and ruins it. The majority of this game just had me feeling exhausted and tired. I'd get through that initial gimmick and be like, I'm ready for the level to properly start now. Oh, wait, no, it's just ended. The story of Sonic Colors takes things back to basics, which is exactly what Sonic fans wanted in the early 2010s. Just back to Sonic taking on Dr. Robotnik, who's got some kind of nefarious scheme going on. This time, rather than putting animals in capsules, he's putting wisps in capsules. There's also this whole subplot about Dr. Robotnik wanting to use his interstellar amusement park to mind control the entire planet, but that goes nowhere. The dialogue is clearly aimed at children, it's perfectly appropriate, it's fine. It's really just something there to motivate the player. Sonic Forces goes, well, attempts to replicate the shonen anime style of earlier Sonic games. Well, earlier 3D Sonic games. And it completely fucking fails. Absolutely none of this works, be it on a narrative level, on a character level, on a dialogue level. Like, colors at least is appropriate for children, but this just does not work full stop. And as well as that, the story has a much greater influence on the game at large. 
Not to mention, Sonic Forces sets up exciting boss fights that it has no payoff for whatsoever. I'm looking at you, Chaos Zero, but that doesn't mean that Sonic Colors is wholly innocent of that either. Remember when they set up a potential Tails boss fight only to drop that in the exact same cutscene of which it happened? And then you just fight a standard old boss fight. Both of these stories are lame, but Sonic Colors gets the point for being slightly less lame. Alright, so this should go without saying. Sonic Colors released on the Wii. Sonic Forces released on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. Sonic Forces should surely be the better game in terms of presentation. And eh, kinda. The model is a higher poly, the shaders and lighting is all a bit better, sure. But I'm gonna go on a limb and say Sonic Colors is the better looking game overall. For starters, the art direction is just that bit more ambitious. These stages look that bit more ambitious. But all of the stages also look pretty harmonious with each other as well. There's nothing that feels like it's in an outright different art style. Whereas with Sonic Forces, we've got very cartoonish looking locations alongside much more detailed looking locations, which it just, it, it's a bit discordant. Sonic Colors definitely did more with the resources and power that it had at its disposal, where Sonic Forces kind of just did the bare minimum for its generation of consoles. And it kind of just suffers for it when compared to Sonic Colors, and even games before that. Goes to show that ideas and execution are overall more important than resources. Heck, Sonic Colors still just looks stunning today, just for its art style. Everything here looks great. As for the music, this is just strictly preference-based. Uh, Sonic Colors has a superb soundtrack, and all of the theme musics and instrumentation fit all of the stages really well. There's a lot of diversity in the instruments used. Sonic Forces goes less for that. So, like, between modern Sonic, the Avatar, and classic Sonic, they each have their own designated musical style, but it doesn't change much from zone to zone. I think Colors on a whole works better, but I find myself revisiting the soundtrack to Forces just a little bit more often. It doesn't really matter. Both of these soundtracks fucking slap. So overall, I had an okay time with both of these games. Sonic Forces definitely ends much too quick, whereas Sonic Colors, it also ends quick, but has me wondering, god damn, when will it fucking end? And it's kind of the weird thing with Sonic Colors, is while the game is really, really short, it still manages to outstay its welcome. I'm gonna straight up say it, I had a better and more consistent overall time with Sonic Forces. However, considering Colors was released in 2010 for the Nintendo Wii, a much more primitive bit of hardware, it is definitely an overall superior experience to Sonic Forces, and it's kind of just weird to see that the final game of the 2010s really didn't learn anything from the first game of the 2010s. It really looks like Sonic Team learned nothing over the course of that decade, but what makes it much weirder is that Sonic Generations improved on everything that Sonic Colors got wrong, and is better than Sonic Forces in pretty much every single conceivable way. Sonic Generations is near as damn it a perfect Sonic game. And heck, Sonic Unleashed, I'd say, is even better. It just goes to show, it's like, the quality's all over the map. I don't think Sega are learning lessons or even regressing, they're just kind of doing whatever. For Sonic Forces to repeat the things that Sonic Colors did, and somehow make them worse in many regards is pretty unacceptable. And, like, the fact that its level design has a completely different set of problems to what Sonic Colors did. And it, it just, you know, it is just lame going from Sonic Colors to Sonic Forces. But I'd say on a whole, there's really not much of a quality dissonance between what is considered the best 3D Sonic game and the most disappointing one. That sounds really cynical, but I love 3D Sonic. Games like Sonic Adventure 1, 2, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Generations, Sonic Lost World, those games are my jam. Sonic Colors and Sonic Forces just don't really do it for me. And another just alarming thing is that, allegedly, if rumors are to be believed, Sega will be releasing a remaster of Sonic Colors, potentially this year, as part of Sonic's 30th anniversary celebrations. Now the thing with Sonic Colors is that game was everything every Sonic fan wanted in 2010, but I don't think it is now. It's something that worked really well because it pushed the Wii to its absolute limits, but I think graphical upgrade or not, it's just not going to fly on other consoles. And that's going to be a tough pill to swallow because Sonic Colors 
was reviewed really well and it was considered the game that broke the Sonic cycle and was the first 3D Sonic game to really get things right in a long time. So if they're going to release a remaster of that game for current consoles, it's going to need more than a graphical upgrade. Otherwise, the only message this is going to send people is that even Sonic Colors doesn't really work. Even what's considered the best of the 3D Sonic games isn't really all that great. And that's not a message I want anyone to get. So, Sega, my advice is if you really do insist on redoing Sonic Colors, step one, delete all of the levels. Step two, look up fun in the dictionary. Step three, redo the levels with that in mind. Or alternatively, just remake Sonic Unleashed instead. So what do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, hit subscribe, hit the like button, and in the description below are links to my different social media feeds, including my Twitter where I'm most active, as well as that is a link to the Patreon for if you want to go that little bit further to support me, which I would be very grateful for. Now with that all being said, I would just like to give a quick shout out to my $10 tier patrons, Cirrus the Skeptic and Marcus Ward. You guys are legends! Anyways, thank you so much for watching guys, and have a great day.